Geometric Probability 10.6b. We're up to 12 previous videos for Chapter 10 that are linked in this description in the Geometry Playlist. You'll also find 10.6a there if you need it. So remember that in probability, the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment is called the sample space. Any set of outcomes is called an event. We covered that in the last video, 10.6a. You should also have covered that in middle school. Hopefully you did. If every outcome in the sample space is equally likely, the theoretical probability of an event is p, that's for our probability, is equal to the quotient of the number of outcomes in the event and the number of outcomes in the sample space. Geometric probability is used when an experiment has an infinite number of outcomes. In geometric probability, the probability of an event is based on a ratio of geometric measures like length, angle measure, area, and the outcomes of an experiment may be points on a segment or in a plane figure. So here's some info for your notes. For geometric probability, we've got our examples of a segment with points A, B, C, D. We have a circle that has an angle inside, and we have a rectangle that has a red triangle inside. That'll be for area. The sample space for the length would be all points on segment AD. For angle measure, it would be all points in the circle. For area, it would be all points in the rectangle, including what's inside the red triangle. For event, it would be all points on BC segment BC, if, it, if a point fell anywhere in this area. And for angle measure would be all points in the shaded region for the event. So it would be everything in this red angle here. And the event for an area would be all the points in this red triangle. Our probability would be the quotient of BC over AD this little segment BC over the whole thing AD. That would be for length. For angle measure, the probability would be the measure of this angle over 360 degrees because circles are 360 degrees. And for area, the probability would be the quotient of the area of triangle and area of rectangle. Remember if an event has a probability P of occurring, the probability of the event not occurring is 1 minus p. We talked about that in the last video. And probability can be represented as a fraction, decimal, or percent. The probability of an event is always a number from 0 to 1 or 0% to 100%. And again, we covered that in the last video. We can use length to find geometric probability. Here we have a segment ABCD going across with these points. It's segment AD. And we can see that this section is a 4, that's a 3, and that's a 5 for its measures. And the point is chosen randomly somewhere on segment AD. Find the probability of each event. So what's the probability the point is on AC? That would be this area here. So the probability would be AC over AD. That would be 4 plus 3 over 4 plus 3 plus 5, the whole thing. So that would be a 7 over a 12, 7 twelfths, that it's on AC. The point is not on A segment AB, so we want the probability that it's not in that seg section right there, that segment. First, we find the probability that the point is on AB. So to find that it's not on AB, we first find the probability that it is on segment AB. So the probability of it being on segment AB would be AB over AD. That would be a 4 over a 12, the whole thing. That would be 1 third. Now what we do is subtract the probability that the point is on segment AB from 1. Because for it to be not, it's 1 minus that probability. So the probability of it not being on segment AB, this one that we're trying to find, would be 1 minus 1 third. 
if that's the probability of it being on AB, segment AB, then we know for it to not be on segment AB, it's two-thirds. A point is chosen randomly on segment AD. Find the probability of each event. So the point is on segment AB or it's on CD. We write the probability of segment AB or segment CD. That's going to equal the probability of segment AB plus the probability of segment CD. That's going to be 4 twelfths plus 5 twelfths. That's going to be 9 twelfths or 3 fourths. That's the probability that it will be on AB or CD. The cycle of a stoplight is green for 25 seconds, yellow for 5 seconds, and red for 30 seconds. So what's the probability the light will be yellow when we arrive? So we have a model of this. Here's green for 25 seconds, then it's yellow for 5, and then red for 30. We've got an A, B, C, D. To find the probability, we draw a segment to represent the number of seconds that each color light is on. So our probability of it being yellow, which is a 5, is going to be 5 over the 25, the 5, and the 30. Added together, we get 5 over 60, 5 sixtieths, which is 1 twelfth. And 1 divided by 12 is approximately 0.0833, it continues, which is approximately 0 0.08. That is the probability of it being yellow when we arrive. If we arrive at the light 50 times, we can predict how many times we'll have to stop and wait more than 10 seconds. So here we have our model again. On segment AD, that's the whole thing, the event of stopping and waiting more than 10 seconds is represented by a segment that starts at C and ends 10 units from D. And the probability of stopping and waiting over 10 seconds is P equals 20 over 60. Because it ended 10 seconds from D, we took the 10 away from the 30 and we got 20. And it's over the entire thing, 60. That's one third. If we arrive at the light 50 times, we'll probably stop and wait more than 10 seconds. Approximately one third times 50 which is equal to 16 point all of this, which just rounds to approximately 17 times because we're trying to find whole times, right? So it'd be approximately 17. We can use angle measures to find geometric probability. We can use this spinner to find the probability of each event. So the probability of the pointer landing on red would be P equals this 80 for the 80 degrees over 360 for the entire degrees of the circle. That simplifies to 2 ninths. And the probability of landing on purple or blue, well, that would be the 75 for the purple plus the 60 for the blue over the 360 degrees of the entire circle. So we'd have 135 360 ths which simplifies to 3 eighths. And the probability of not landing on brown, brown's pretty big. We would do 360 degrees of the circle minus the 100 degree angle, which gives us 260, and that would be over the 360 degrees of the whole circle. We can simplify that to 13 eighteenths. We can also find the probability it will land on brown and subtract that from 1. If that's 13 eighteenths, then it would be 5 eighteenths of a chance that it would land on brown, wouldn't it? If we subtract 13 eighteenths from 1, it equals 5 eighteenths. So we have 5 eighteenths of a chance of spinning this and it landing on brown. 
We can use area to find geometric probability. We can find the probability that a point chosen randomly inside the rectangle is in each given shape, and then we can round to the nearest hundredth. So this is 45 meters across. It's 20 meters wide. We can see this triangle has an apothem of 6 meters. We can also say that's the radius of the circle, isn't it? We can see this is 12 meters, this is 3 meters, and we can see its height is 10 meters. So for the equilateral triangle, the first thing we're going to do is find its perimeter. Now for the equilateral triangle, we learned this in video 10.2c. We know that the radius of this circle is 6 meters. We also know that's the apothem of this equilateral triangle. The apothem is the distance from the center to the side of the triangle. It's an equilateral triangle. It told us that. So it's equiangular. And the triangle sum theorem says the sum of the interior angles of a triangle total 180 degrees. So we have three of them. That's 60 degrees each. And if we draw an angle here from the center point D to this vertex B, then it would split this in half because it's equiangular and equilateral. We would have tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side, that's 6 meters, over the adjacent side, this green BE. So we'd have 6 over BE. We can multiply both sides by BE and eliminate this fraction, and we get BE tangent 30 degrees is equal to 6. Now we just divide both sides by the tangent of 30, eliminate this as a 1, and we've got BE is equal to 6 over the tangent of 30 degrees. And BE is equal to 6 square root of 3. We put that into our calculator. Now. If this little green part is 6 square root of 3, we have 6 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means our perimeter is 6 times 6 square root of 3. We multiply these two 6's together and get 36 square root of 3 for our perimeter of the blue triangle. So now we know that the perimeter is 36 square root of 3. We do A area equals half times the apothem, that was the 6, times the perimeter, 36 square root of 3, and it's going to be approximately 187 point, ooh, that's long, which is approximately 187 meters squared. And the area of the rectangle is A equals BH. We had 45 meters and 20 meters for the side. That would give us 900 meters squared. And the probability that a point is inside the triangle is this 187 over the 900. We do a little math on our calculator. We get this nice long decimal, which is approximately 0.21, because we were supposed to round it to the nearest hundredth. So that's the probability that the point is inside that blue triangle inside the rectangle. So now let's find what the probability is that it's inside of this trapezoid. So now it's inside the rectangle, but it's also inside this trapezoid. So we have a base that's 3 meters and a base that's 12 meters and a height that's 10 meters. 3, 12, and 10. We find the, we know our base sub 1 was a 3 and our base sub 2 was a 12 and our height was a 10. So we get half times 15 times 10, which is half times 150, which is 75 meters squared. And the area of the rectangle was 900 meters squared. We figured that from the previous part of it. So the probability that a random point is inside the trapezoid is this 75 over this 900. We do division on our calculator and we get 0.08 on our three repeats. So it's approximately 0.08 because we're supposed to round to the nearest hundredth. So now let's find what the probability of the point is for landing in just this circle. 
okay? It's got a radius of six meters. For the circle, our area is pi r squared, and we know our radius is six, so that's pi six squared, or 36 pi, which is approximately 113.097, and it continues on. So it's approximately 113.1 meters squared. The area of the rectangle, again, we figured was 900 meters squared. The probability that the random point is inside the circle would be that 113.1 over the 900. We get this nice long decimal when we do this division, and it's approximately 0.13 when we round it to the nearest hundredth. So probability is a number from 0 to 1 or 0% to 100% that is the measure of how likely an event is to occur. Theoretical probability is the ratio of the number of equally likely outcomes in an event to the total numbers of possible outcomes. It's the event over the sample space. Geometric probability is a form of theoretical probability determined by a ratio of geometric measures such as lengths, areas, or volumes. It's used when an experiment has an infinite number of outcomes. We could do angles too, couldn't we? And a little extra info, we can use this symbol, this sideways L, for not. So you could write the probability of it not being A. Okay, a little quick shorthand. Our next lesson is use geometric probability to estimate pi. That'll be 10.6c before we move on to chapter 11 and talk about solid geometry. So we can use geometric probability to find the probability that a dart would land on a certain part of a dartboard. I hope I explained this well enough for you and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.